Bruchem Aboim, again, welcome to our home. Thank you for attending. So, this week on my thoughts, I'd like to develop a deeper understanding of the Amida. Again, this will be an introduction to that. The Hebrew word Amida is translated as the standing prayer. It is considered to be by many the most sacred of all the prayers that we recite daily. In fact, when our sages use the Hebrew word tefillah, which means prayer, well, it is most often used to refer to the Amida prayer. It is the only prayer that is recited quietly by the congregants and then repeated out loud by the Chazan when he leads the congregation. The Amida <clears throat> me, is also referred to as the Shemona Esrei, which is translated as the 18 blessings, which refers to the 18 benedictions recited in this prayer, though in reality today we recite 19 blessings. So originally when the men of the Great Assembly, the Anshik Nessus Agdola, organized the prayers, the Amida consisted of only 18 blessings. They may have chosen the number 18 to connect to the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word chai, which means life. Since it is through our recitation of the Amida that we create the possibility of acquiring a meaningful life. The 19th prayer was added years later by Shmuel HaKotten as a form of protection due to the proliferation of Jewish informers and heretics uh, who brought death and destruction upon their Jewish brethren. But we should notice immediately, it's not just the, in this prayer, but in most of the prayers that we recite, is that they are stated in the plural tense. When we as a nation stood at Mount Sinai and again at the mountains of Harevel and Hargrizim, we accepted upon ourselves the concept of Arebus, which means shared responsibility. We serve one God as one nation with one body. What affects some of us affects all of us. Our sages tell us that the only reason for us to be given a mouth was, as is stated in Psalm 145, at the last verse of the Ashrei prayer, Tehillat Hashem Yedabar Pi. Let my mouth declare the praise of God's mighty acts. By acknowledging God's greatness, then we are able to elevate ourselves to a greater understanding and appreciation of all of his glory. You know, the Amida is repeated at least three times daily, though the format changes during the Shabbat and Yom Tovim, the holidays. The word that we recite in the first three blessings and in the last three blessings are identical in every Amida throughout the year. The only thing that changes is the middle blessing. Now, during the times of the temples, when they were in existence, no personal sacrifices were offered on the Shabbat or on the holidays. Personal sacrifices were only allowed to be brought up on the weekdays. Now, when the men of the Great Assembly authored the prayer book, they decided to follow the same formula. We therefore do not make any personal requests in this prayer on either the Shabbat or the holidays. At those times, what we do is we insert a seventh blessing, which is communal, and which proclaims the theme of the day. The order of our prayers follows the same outline as does a musical symphony. You know, in a symphony, there are four movements. The first movement introduces the theme of the piece. It begins with power. The second movement is more sedate and much softer. Whereas the third movement gains momentum. It is the most powerful of all the movements. Then the fourth movement concludes the symphony, bringing it to its conclusion. In the weekday morning prayers, the first movement is referred to as Pasuke de Zimra, the verses of song, which, so to speak, introduces the morning prayer. The second movement is based on the Shema Yisrael and its blessings, which are more sedate. Then the third movement is the Amida, the standing prayer, which is the most powerful of all the movements. And then the fourth movement brings the morning prayer to a conclusion. What I find interesting is that in a symphony, the third movement is the most powerful of all the four movements. However, when we recite the Amida, which is the third movement in our prayer, we recite the words quietly. The power that is this prayer generates 
is not in volume, it is rather in its intensity. We are privy to a private audience with God Almighty, our Father in Heaven. So once again, the Amida is composed of three different ideas. The men of the Great Assembly followed the same formula that Moshe invoked when he prayed to God, as is recorded in the portion of Atchana. The Talmud in Brachot 32a states that the practice of commencing the Amida with blessings that offer praise to God is connected to Rev. Simloy's statement com commenting on Moshe's practice of prayer. The Amida begins with the praise of God, continues with request and or the theme of the day, and, and then it ends with an expression of gratitude for all that God Almighty has, has and will do for us. The middle blessings consist of 13 personal requests that we offer to God Almighty while reciting our weekday prayers. However, on the Shabbat and holidays, we substitute our personal request, as I mentioned, with the theme of the day. My objective in this lecture is twofold. First and foremost, I would like to offer a simple theme for each of the blessings that we recite in the Amida, something that we can all focus on as we recite our prayers. You know, sadly, all of our prayers seem to be rushed, especially if you pray with a minyan, a quorum of men. Secondly, I would like to delve into all the blessings and try to gain a deeper understanding of what each of these blessings truly represent. Let us begin with a brief overview of each of the blessings in the Amida. The first blessing introduces our forefathers, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The second blessing alludes to God Almighty's might, his Gevura. The third blessing introduces the holiness, the Kedusha of God's name. These three opening blessings begin with the praise of God. The liturgy is identical in each and every Amida recited daily throughout the year. The only exception is the change of a sentence in the second blessing. The format deviates from summer to winter in conjunction with the blessings of rain and of dew. The weekly Amida consists, continues with 13 expressions of our personal requests. In the first of these blessings, we ask for intellect. The second blessing is connected with, with um, repentance. The third is for forgiveness. The fourth is a request for our personal salvation. In the fifth blessing, we request health and healing. In the sixth, we request a year of prosperity. The seventh blessing is for the ingathering of the exiles, the connection to Mashiach. The eighth is a request for the restoration of justice in the world. The ninth is a prayer to protect us from the heretics. The tenth request is a blessing for the righteous. The eleventh is a request to rebuild Jerusalem. In the twelfth blessing, we ask for the return of the reign of the Davidic dynasty. And in the thirteenth prayer, we finish our personal request with a prayer that all of our words should be acceptable before God Almighty, our Father in Heaven. In the last three blessings, we acknowledge our gratitude to God Almighty for all the goodness that He has bestowed upon us. The 17th blessing in the Amida is a request that God should return the temple service. In the 18th blessing, we thank God Almighty for everything that He has and continuously does for us. The Amida ends with the 19th blessing, <clears throat> which begins and ends with the Hebrew word, Shalom, peace since without peace, nothing else can exist. In the weekly Amida, we recite 19 blessings. However, on the Shabbat and Yom Tovim, there are only seven prayers that we recite. The first three and the last three blessings remain the same. However, on the Shabbat and the holidays, the middle section is different. It introduces all the sacrifices that were offered in the temple for that day. Since we no longer have a temple, we recite our prayers in lieu of the sacrifices, as it states in the verse in Hosea, and we will render the prayers of our lips in place of the bullocks. In addition, we recite a theme that is connected with the occasion. So, in the first blessing, we acknowledge God Almighty as our God and the God of our fathers. In the second blessing, we recognize God as the giver of life, 
It is he who will return all souls who are resting in their graves back to life. What we refer to as the Chiat HaMesim, the revival of the dead. The third blessing begins and ends with the Hebrew word Kadosh, which means holy. It emphasizes the fact that all holiness originates from God Almighty. In the first of our personal requests, we ask God for wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. In the second blessing, we ask for Him that He inspire us to connect with His Torah, prayer, and repentance. In the third request, we continue with a plea for forgiveness from our Father, our King. In our fourth request, we ask for an end to our suffering with the coming of the final redemption, again, with Mashiach, Sikhanu. In the fifth request, we ask that he bless us with good health. In the sixth, sixth request, we ask him to bless us with material success. In the seventh request, we ask him to gather in the exiles from all the four corners of the earth. Again, a request from Mashiach. In the eighth request, we ask him to restore our righteous judges and spiritual leaders. In the ninth blessing, we ask him to protect us from those who want to cause us harm. In the tenth blessing, we ask him to bestow his mercy upon the righteous and pious individuals. In the eleventh blessing, we ask him to rebuild Jerusalem to its former status. In the twelfth blessing, we ask him to plant the seed of Mashiach, of the Messiah. In the thirteenth blessing, we ask him to hear our cry and to accept our prayers. Then with the last three blessings, we conclude our prayers with words of gratitude and a request for peace. You know, in the book, My Prayer, authored by Nissim Mendel, he brings a Pirkei de Rebbe Lezer that states that the Amida is more than a collection of petitions and requests for ourselves and our people. They also serve as a reminder of certain events that occurred in our history. Now, according to our sages, each of the blessings tells a story of some miracle that happened to our ancestors in the past, which inspired the angels in heaven to sing praise, Shira, to God our Father in heaven. The first blessing connects with Admavinu, Abraham our father, who was saved by God Almighty when Nimrod had thrown him into a fiery furnace. The angels praise God with the blessing, Mugen Avram, the shield of Abraham. The second blessing connects with Yitzchak Avinu, Isaac, our father. The angels sang praises to God when Yitzchak was taken off the altar, where his father Avram had bound him by the request of God. What we call Tchias Amesim, the reviver of the dead. The third blessing alludes to Yaakov Avinu, Jacob, our father, who sanctified God's name after his dream with the ladder and the angels going up to heaven. This was the occasion that inspired the angels to praise God with the blessing of Hakel HaKadosh, the Holy God. The fourth blessing is stated in connection with Yosef. The night before he was to appear before Paro, an angel taught him all 70 languages in one night. The angels then praised God with the blessing, Chonen Hadas, the gracious giver of knowledge. The fifth blessing alludes to Reuven, who repented after he was seen as culpable for moving his father's bed. Thus the angel sang, Harotzeb B'Teshuva, he who accepts repentance. The sixth blessing is connected to Yehuda, when he accepted responsibility for the incident with Tamar. God forgave him and the angels sang the blessing, Chanun Hamar Belisloa the gracious one who forgives abundantly. The seventh blessing alludes to the redemption of the children of Israel from Egypt, which inspired the angels to sing Goel Yisroel, the Redeemer of Israel. The eighth blessing alludes to Abramavino, Abraham our father, who agreed to be circumcised when he was 100 years old. When he recovered from his circumcision, the angels sang, Rofe Chole Yisroel, he who heals the sick of his people. The ninth blessing is in connection with God's blessing to Yitzhak of Vina, Isaac our father, who during a famine was blessed that he should reap, me'asha orim, a hundredfold. The angels then praise God with the blessing, 
Mivarei Hashanim, he who blesses the years. The tenth blessing alludes to the reunion of Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father, with all of his sons in Egypt. The angels were inspired and they sang, Mekabetz Nidache Amo Yisroel, he who gathers the exiles of his people Israel. The eleventh blessing connects to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, who gave over the laws of righteousness and justice to the Jewish nation. The angel then sang, Melech Ohev Tzedakah Umishpah, the king who loves righteousness and justice. The twelfth blessing connects with God Almighty drowning the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. The angels then sang, Shover Oyevim Amachnia Zedim, he who breaks the enemies and subdues the arrogant. The thirteen blessings connects with God's promise to Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father, that on his deathbed it would be Yosef, his long lost son, who would be the one to close his eyes as he passed on. As Yosef closed his father's eyes, the angel sang, Mishan Umiftok Latzadika, the support and trust of the righteous. The fourteenth blessing alludes to King Solomon, Shlomo Melech, and the building of the first temple. After it was completed, the angels were inspired to sing Bone Yerushalayim, the builder of Jerusalem. The fifteenth blessing was inspired by the children of Israel when they sang the Az Yashir after crossing the Red Sea. The angels sang Matzmiah Keren Yeshua, he who causes the strength of salvation to flourish. The sixteenth blessing alludes to God's acceptance of the cries and prayers of the enslaved children of Israel in Egypt. The angels then sang Shomea Tefillah, he who accepts prayer. The seventeenth blessing was sung after the tabernacle in the desert was constructed and the divinity of God, the Shekhinah, descended on it. The angels sang, HaMachazir Shekhinah Sol Tzion, He who restores his Shekhinah, his divinity, to Tzion. The eighteenth blessing was sung after King Solomon Shlomo Mello completed the construction of the first temple. At the dedication ceremony, all the nations celebrated the occasion with songs and psalms in a state of ecstasy. The angels joined in their celebration and they sang, Hatov Shimako Lachona El Lahodot. Your name is good, and unto you it is becoming to sing praises. The Amida ends with the 19th blessing that the angels sang when the children of Israel finally settled in the land in peace and harmony. They sang, he who blesses his people Israel with peace. So we witness that each of these blessings connect in some way with our history as a nation. These are some simple ideas that we can hopefully recall as we recite the words of the Amida in our daily prayers. I feel that it would be <clears throat> beneficial for us to have a deeper understanding of just how special the words of this prayer really are. So next week, I would like to begin to examine each of the blessings in the Amida in depth. By doing so, we will hopefully gain a deeper appreciation of the words and the thoughts that the Anshe Knesset Agdola, that the men of the Great Assembly arranged so that we could connect our prayers to our Father in Heaven. In addition, we will discover how the 13 requests in the Amida connect to the 13 months of the Jewish calendar and to the 13 tribes of the children of Israel. Let us all pray that God Almighty brings an end to the war in Gaza with a swift and complete victory over Hamas and all the evil in the world. May he return all the hostages home safely, cure the sick and injured, comfort the mourners, and return all of our brave IDF soldiers home victorious, led by Mashiach Tzukainu quickly and in our time, and let it be now. Again, let me thank you once again for attending. Again, God should bless you and yours with all that's good. Be safe, be healthy, be happy. Um, please, if you haven't done so before, push the subscribe button and, of course, the like button, and please share with your friends. Again, thank you very much for attending. There will be a musical rendition after this, and please stay tuned. God bless, be well, Shabbat Shalom.